Okay, guys, this is going to be so good because Jackie is freaking amazing and she's got like energy like a firecracker. Like if you think I got energy, like she, she's like, <laughs> you know, like amazing. So anyways, you can take me and double me and that's her. And so she is awesome. So I'm super excited to have her on today. And we're going to obviously get your TikTok tips because we know you're the TikTok master. I just like saying that. Um, but first, can you tell us your story and you can share all the goods, all the bads, all the this, all of that? Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited. Um, so like Christy mentioned, my name is Jackie. Um, I'm presidential. I'm from Canada and I've been in the business for three years, um, actually three years last month. So three years in one month. Um, but you guys, I pretty much just joined you know, I had watched somebody for a really long time build this business and it was a random person that added me on Facebook. She was just this like random mom. And, um, you know, I was working two jobs. I was working at, um, so it's called TELUS. It's like kind of your version of like Verizon or AT&T. I was working outside sales for them and, um, I was always serving, you know, I always worked extra, I served at nights. Um, my fiance was working at the railway. He was an engineer for one of the railways out here. And we were just as in our adult life, we were always working and we were always broke. And I, um, you know, after dating for a couple of years and doing that all the time, we decided to move to a new city where we literally knew, knew nobody, moved away from our family. It was cheaper to live. Um, you know, it was better for his career. And I was like, I'll just move out there. I'll transfer and I'll just like start my new life there. So I, um, you know, moved up there with, with him and he, he was gone a lot. Like he was gone over 300 hours a month. So at the railway, he would be gone for 30 hours at a time. So if he'd take a trip, they would call him and be like, you have two hours to get to work. He would get on a train, take it to a city, sleep there overnight and then take it home. So he'd be gone for like 30 hours. And then there was no schedule ever. So there was never a time where he'd be home. He made really, really good money. Um, but I just always worked and, you know, I would pick that second job up and basically we never saw each other. And even though we made really good money, we were always broke. And I just thought that's how life was supposed to be. Um, and we just kept doing it. And it wasn't until um, that I had my son that I realized I could not do this anymore. Um, we lived you know, far away from our family, so day daycare wasn't an option. You know, with Mike being gone so much at the railway, I thought to myself, like, if we're paying for daycare, Mike's never going to see, you know, he's never going to see Mason. Um, we're going to be paying for daycare even when Mike is home because we had to pay for it. It just gave me the worst anxiety even thinking about it. And I realized I would be working pretty much to just have a couple hundred dollars a month left over at the end of the month after I paid for daycare fees. So I just thought to myself, I need to do something different. Um, I've never been the person that like, you know, like I, I, what I'm trying to say is before this business, I quit everything. Like I'm not the person that would like do something and stick with it. Like I, I'm like a professional quitter. I quit lots of jobs. I have, I've even done another company before this that I quit. And, um, I just knew as soon as I had my kids, sometimes you have to have a breakdown to break through. And I knew as soon as I had my kid, like I cannot keep doing this. And I would be ignorant to think that if I didn't change what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, my, anything was going to change. Like I was still going to be in debt. We were about $60,000 in debt, you know, mixed between expensive living, bad decisions, you know, debt, you know, payments, interest, all that. I just got to this point where I was like, dang, I got to do something very different. And it was crazy because in this time I had joined another company. I was trying to sell like hand sanitizers and laundry soap, but it never worked out. And I had watched this girl post about this business for so long. And I had, you know, said no to her. She had followed up with me. I I'd turned it down so many times, but I had watched her be so consistent over the three years that I had been watching her. She was, you know, being at home with her kids. She was retiring her husband. She was paying for things in cash. Like I really felt like I knew her through her sharing her story every single day. And I remember just one day thinking to myself, like, you know what, I would rather just do this and give it my all. Like, I'm not just going to do it and waste my time. And I think that was an important decision I had to make. Like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I just want to see what it feels to not give up this time. And so I jumped into this business and it's crazy because a week after she quit <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? Like three years after watching this lady, then she quits. So I came into this business. And I'm like, okay, now I don't have any upline. And I just decided at that point, like I either can give up or I can move forward. I can either throw in the towel or I can move forward. And at this point, I feel like my pride, like, thank gosh, like got my pride got in the way because I didn't want to be the person that joined another company and quit. I wanted to prove people wrong. I wanted to show people that I could do this. And so I just decided like, if anybody else can be successful, I'm going to find them and I'm going to copy them. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, 
I'm going to look at the people that are having success and I'm going to do as they do. And guys, that's literally what I did. My first month was so slow in this business. I made $30. I had talked to a lot of people, had a lot of no's, had a lot of unfriending, had a lot of people giving their opinion. And I feel like, at, you know, when you're, when you're new, that can be the thing that kind of sets you off. But I just knew to push through. I just, I just was like, I'm not literally when you take quitting off the table, not being successful is not an option either. Like when you take quitting off the table and you just know everything that comes in my way, I'm going to figure out a way around, not a way out. I'm going to get over it. It's very powerful. And I was, I'm just really, really happy that I had that mindset because three months into this business, we went diamond and it was crazy because at the beginning of that month, we were paid as an executive, meaning that I had planted many, many seeds in my first three full months in this business that weren't harvesting. I had planted so many seeds that I didn't see the results from. I had planted the seeds and then loved on the seeds and watered the seeds and grew the seeds and then nothing was sprouting until that month that we went diamond and it just all happened together. And it was, you know, that work with a lot of like mindset, like I was watching The Seeker all the time and I just knew, I was like, I have to speak this out, I'm going diamond. We went, you know, diamond, then we went double diamond the next month. We had earned $40,000 in bonuses and I was like, peace. And I like quit all my jobs and I was like, I'm going to do this full time. And then I just like quit all my jobs and I was like, just so loud about it. And I was almost like, you ever heard that Drake, that Drake song? And it's like still on top. Like I'm scared of the drop. That was me. And I was like, I cannot drop. And so I just like threw gas on the fire. Cause I was like, I just quit all my jobs. I can't do, I like, I can't go back. And so I just decided like, this is what I'm doing. And you know, it's, like that's the short version, that's the short story to success. But what, what part I leave out sometimes and I shouldn't is, you know, after we went double diamond, we had an entire leg quit. And like, I'm talking cancel. Like we went from making $5,000 to the next couple months was like 2000 and then it dwindled away. And I remember like wanting to quit, but just remembering that whole time, I would have never joined the person that I joined with if she had gotten her, you know, panties in a bunch because I didn't join with her, like she was still consistent and I knew that I had to be. And so I remained consistent all this time and was like, you know, I hate saying rebuilding because we're always building, but I was rebuilding my chart. And it's crazy because I signed up this lady off Instagram who bought greens for me as a random customer, sent me her daughter who is now a triple diamond on her team, on my team with her husband as a triple diamond. And so I thought to myself, like, like after I had watched my, my journey, after I looked back, I was like, wow, if I had stopped working my business because of my emotions, I would have never found this random lady who bought greens, who would have never introduced me to her daughter, who is like, just like such a, like incredible leader on my team now. And so, yeah, that's pretty much our story. You know, we, we, we just kept going. We've had highs and lows, but this business has given so much to us. We've, you know, been able to, obviously I left my job a year and a half later. Um, and actually this is another kind of trippy part of our story too, is um, you know, so we had Mason, um, I was home with him, Mike was still working at the railway about a year into our business. I found out I was pregnant again. And, um, um, about halfway through the pregnancy, I started having really bad complications and then just getting closer to it. I was stressing out because, um, you know, like I was just stressing out because I was like, what if Mike is gone while I'm, um, you know, in the hospital or there's something wrong and Mason's here and it just started freaking me out and it got so like dire at the end of it that I was like, we need Mike home. And even all, all this, all this was happening. I still through all like the crazy times could work my business and I still remain consistent in the hospital. I was consistent. All these times I was consistent. And by the time it came to have our daughter, the income from this business on Mike's account, cause I had enrolled him as my spouse his income from an account that never even enrolled anybody was making more than his railway career. And so we allowed, he was able to come home and we, he, we gave him the full parental leave. And I remember thinking to myself, like, we didn't know how bad we needed this until we needed to retire him from the only income that really kept, kept our house afloat. So we were able to bring him home from that parental leave. And then, um, he never had to go back like this business as it grew through that year, he never had to go back. And so this business just turned into, you know, paying off our debt, being a full-time family, all of our, like both of our kids just know both our parents home, um, both their parents home, you know, we've been able to give back travel. Like the, it, I could sit here for hours and tell you all the things that we've been able to do because of this business. And it's just so crazy to think like, 
we would have never had this life if we had given up, you know, and it hasn't always been easy. And it's, it, I mean, there's been highs and lows. I saw this visual the other day that was so true. And I was like, this is going to be your life. And it's just like, or this is going to be your business. Sorry. Right. Up and down highs and lows. This is going to be you. And it's just like this straight across, like consistent. And I'm like, dude, like sometimes you don't know how badly you need this until you need this. And you can't start working when you need it because that defeats the purpose. Like you got to start yesterday. And so just in the three years that we've been here, you guys, we've had highs and lows, but I, I'm telling you, I would do it all over again a million times over because it's just drastically changed the entire way we look, like just everything. So that's pretty much my story. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Okay. So how many of you guys are just like super fired up by everything she's saying? Yes. So fired up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before I actually ask her some like tips and scripts and this and that, I want you guys to remember that motivation only lasts about 24 hours. So how you feel now about what Jackie's saying and you're like, heck yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. It's only going to last about 24 hours. You have got to become disciplined in the way that she was disciplined. And honestly, everything you said about your story is really faith. You had the faith to plant the seeds, to water them, to wait for them to sprout. You did not say, okay, I planted all these seeds. Why am I not dime in my first month or my second month? I, I messaged all the amount of people I should have. No, you had the faith to stay consistent and stay doing it. And because of that, you were blessed tremendously to go diamond and then double diamond the next month. You had done the work, but you also stayed the course regardless of the results you were getting now. You guys, that's the secret. The secret is staying disciplined in the things that she's about to teach you. The motivation, this excitement, it only lasts about 24 hours. You gotta, you gotta be excited. You gotta wake up excited and do the things each morning to make yourself excited to do the personal development. Okay, so um, this is a huge thing that I think um, some people struggle with and it's kind of like a breakthrough. I think it's like a mindset, but it's also obviously like doing the work. So how, do you, how did, did you grow your network and how do you continue to grow your network? Like pretend like you were a new distributor. What did you do to grow your network and actually have people follow you back on Instagram or add you back on Facebook? So I think realizing that it, this is not something that will happen overnight. So you have to take the emotion out of it and like the impatience out of it. Like there are 7 billion people in the world and somebody turns 18 every day. Like it's an ever growing pot. So if you can just have that mindset with it and just know, like, like if, if that, it, like, if you're just like, okay, I'm like, I don't know how to grow my network. You need to know there's a million ways to grow your network and I kind of will go over a few of them. So when I started, I thought to myself, who am I and who am I going to attract? At the end of the day, people, people want, I want people to read my posts and think me too. I want people to think that's me. So I think, who am I? I'm a mom. You know, I had moved to a new town. I, it was like a smallish town ish. So I was like, you know, whatever. Um, I was a railway wife. So I started kind of making notes about me. And I thought to myself, where can I find these people? So I'm from Canada. And when I started, like, I feel like the States had some stuff that we didn't. And I knew I wanted to grow my network in the US. And so I started to get so strategic and um, intentional with where I'm making sure I was finding people in the U S and making sure I was finding the right people in the U S because I feel like if you just go through a list and just add whoever it's not, you have to have intention. And so my thing was, I want to find moms in Texas. I just chose a random spot in the U S and I, I just chose Texas. And so I think to myself, where are moms <clears throat> in Texas going to be? And like, how am I going to find them? So I started to search on Google baby boutiques in Texas. Um, you know, daycares in Texas. I, I, I temporarily went to school, but I knew I could post about like students needing money. So I would type in universities in Texas. Um, I could type in small towns in Texas. This is all in Google that I'm doing this clothing boutiques in Texas, you know, baby and me or like mom and me baby boutiques in Texas. And like Google would just bring up this whole list of like these businesses. I would go to Facebook, I would go to Instagram and I would find a recent picture of theirs. And then I would just add people that liked it. And honestly, if people message me and say, who is this? I would just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to add you. My finger slipped. Like I was just so awkward. I was like, I'm so sorry. But I just kept adding so many people and some people added me back. Some people didn't, but every single day I like just made sure that I was, my number was increasing. Um, 
you know, and I, and I try to make things so full circle. So for example, if you live in a small town and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I live in a small town, like go to Google, find some small towns in the U.S. or Canada or wherever you're going to network. And then I would post about living in a small town. And so then the people that I knew I was growing my network with would be like, oh my gosh, it's like you're speaking right to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. But really, I strategically found you. It's like railway wife, railway wives. I would add myself into these groups and talk about how their husbands were on the on the road and blah 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 and then I would talk about how I'm thankful because this of this business because before this business I never got to see him at nights because I was serving because he's a railroader but now because of this business and so I started not just growing my network with people that I had in common but then they were like they could see them in me and I think that's why I was enrolling so much in my pole market when I started because they would be like oh my gosh my husband's in the railway oh my gosh like I'm a mom and I was just like weird you know if you have a certain type of dog right like grow your add yourself in a group with those dogs and then post about the dog and just like this is network marketing right so network in these groups whenever I wanted to find out um like you know, let's, let's say if I was trying to Google what's the best dog, dog food for a breed, I'm not going to Google to do that. I'm making a point to go into these groups and do that. Another tip I have for growing, growing, um, like growing your network that I find has helped you, like I do, I do this now and it just gives me so much exposure is I think of things that are shareable. You know, they always say to grow your network, you want to create shareable content, but what's stopping you from sharing your own content? And so I was thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I got to get into groups. Like I got to grow my network. I was at 5,000 friends. I was like, I got to get followers. And so I started like, I'm not very like, I'm not very talented. I don't do things. Like I don't have like any things that I'm good at. So I start, I'm sort of thinking, I'm like, I got to make up something that I'm good at and share it. And it came down to low carb cooking, which is weird because I don't really do that. But I would, I would Google low carb like um, meals and snacks and things and I would make them live and I would add myself into like 50 low carb groups. And then I would make my video live on my own page and then share them into all these groups. You know, there's like mom hack groups. I add myself into like 50 of them. I Google a mom hack, take it from somebody else, recreate it, and then share that content. And so just sharing my own content into these groups, I don't know, it just like brought me so many people. And if you have an instant pot, there's like so many groups for that. Slow cooker, if you do, like there's a girl on our team that has a little dog and she'll like dress it up and like do like, like the nails and stuff live and share that into dog groups. Like anything that's giving you exposure pretty much, I wanna hook them with that. And now they're in my circle and now they're watching. Okay. I freaking love you because you know what people always ask me and I'm like, I don't know, just add a bunch of people. <laughs> you, I love it because you're, this is strategic. This is very strategic and it all comes back to building connection and building relationships and how to get people to connect you. You know, we always talk about how to make people connect with you through your post, but you're doing it immediately before they're even seeing your post really. So Oh my gosh, you're amazing. I was like taking notes, writing stuff on my phone, writing stuff in my freaking notebook. And one thing I want to add actually that I just thought about is like, you can do this with products. And so I, I'll do a little test. Like if I know I'm going to talk about hair, skin, nails, I will search like brittle hair hashtag or like there's, you know, like companies that have like lawsuits against their like things that people have used like products from a company. And I will like, because their hair fault, like whatever, their hair's damaged. And I will like, find people that have like short brittle hair because I had that and I'll share my before and after which is why I think like this because I or like short kit or like short hair don't care or like things like that and I will grow my network intentionally with people that this sounds so crazy but grow my hair intentionally with people that I know will want to use our products um yeah I hope that sorry. oh dude that's amazing that is so awesome. Like, oh my gosh, I, it's so crazy because like, man, you're being super, super intentional. And I love that because like, if you're going to be growing your network, that's the best way to actually get the people to add you back and follow you back. So you're amazing. That, oof, that was the best network growing tip I think we've ever had. Love it. Love it. Okay. I love it. Okay. So this is the big thing. And you guys, here's, I'm, this is going to be my precursor. Um, consistency is key. If you're not going to be consistent with it, just get off it and delete it because it will waste all your damn time. But if you can be intentional with it, you can make a lot of money.
So share with us all the TikTok goods. Okay, this is so fun. I love TikTok. Okay, so this is the thing. I feel like in business, you have to be able to pivot or move or like change with the times. That's why it works is so amazing. We change with the times. And so I kept hearing like TikTok, get on TikTok, be consistent with TikTok. And actually a girl on our team, um, or a girl on my team was like, dude, we got to get on TikTok. And I was just like, okay, let's just get on TikTok. And I think like everything in this, actually the TikTok journey reminded me so much of this business because we had put we had put 200 video. I put 200 videos out over the course of about two or three months. Random, just, you know, it, I'd rather put bad, not, not when posting, but with TikTok, I'd rather put kind of iffy content than no content. Like, well, I figured it out, right? And so I had done 200 almost videos on TikTok, just, you know, talking about the product, talking about the business, incorporating my life into it, just like we teach for social media, making sure there was that good balance. And no, nothing went anywhere. Nothing went anywhere. I had under, you know, maybe a thousand followers, um, no interaction on any of my videos, anything like that. And I think about how that's so much like this business because so many people will like plant a whole bunch of seeds, but they won't stick around to water them. They'll do everything one or two times and they won't stick around and then it doesn't work. And so, you know, when I was putting these video videos up, I felt dumb i felt so i'm like everyone was making fun of me you know because they were like oh nice tiktok video and i was like shut up and i had like a thousand followers and i was like just just let me do it you know and i feel like that's this business oh like you're posting on social media how many customers have you signed in your first month and you're like well done <laughs> right but you just you have to keep doing it and i just had this i don't know i kept doing it and we did one and it went super viral and it went i always went from about a thousand followers to like 26,000 within a couple days. So my network had doubled from TikTok. And then that's where I saw like, okay, if this can happen to me, this can happen to me again. And this can happen to many more people lots of times. Like there's so many people on TikTok. It's always growing, like have an abundant mindset. And so I just set like new to keep being consistent with it. And this is kind of my thing. I don't, I don't interact on there right now. I I think that you should. I as I'm like looking into it, people are saying like, you know, I respond to every comment. I didn't do that when I started and I still don't do that. I just make content. So I do 3 to 5 videos every single day. The best ones that I like the ones that I actually get a lot of like a lot of response of oh my gosh, a lot of response from are our product ones. So visually making the coffee, the collagen, the reds, like things that are visually appealing. People want to watch that. So my favorite one, the fa I always do this one and I always sign customers from it. I label it my beauty drink and I do collagen and then I mix it up and I show them like the, the visual of the collagen, right? Like it's bright pink. Then I add in the greens and it changes the color and I mix it and I talk about what the greens are and then I add in the reds and then I like do all those in one drink and I drink it and it's just like bright red color and I always say if you want a free sample or you want to be a product reviewer text me the word beauty drink to my phone number and so what happens and then I have all these in my text replacement is um is it, like so when pe whenever people are like texting me collagen or beauty drink I say I have a message that says okay awesome I would love to give you some information and I basically am getting like two people from this I would love to you know tell you a little bit about it here it is this is what it does beauty drink and I like list it off now I can you can get this in your hand a couple different ways number one you can um, throw up a post on Facebook for me or Instagram and if I sign any customers from it I'm gonna mail you a free sample or number two, I can offer you a huge discount if you want to review it and share your testimony with me, which sounds better for you. And often, like, I mean, I'll get people that sign, like I'll sign customers from that, but I'm getting so many people to post for me. And then I tell them that they're getting an extra, um, an extra, um, like entry for host to post if they do at my video. So TikTok is actually meant, like, I feel like it's meant for host to post because if Christy makes a video about the opportunity and then I reach out to her about it and she's like, Oh, if you want to enter my contest, just do at it. When I do it, her video, it's showing up on my timeline. It's showing up on my thing. And so all these people started do wedding TikToks that are about the product. It's now going more viral, everything like that. And then it's, being exposed more and then people will do that on your regular stuff too like you guys i did one the other day i ran upstairs and i was like i'm gonna show you and i like made this up okay like i don't do that i'm like i always make this for my kid like i'm trying to be like a pinterest mom but i just saw it somewhere else and i was like i'm gonna do this i had my little toque on outside and i was like i'm gonna make some kid sushi and i was like here's a piece of bread and i was like flattened it and i was like here's some peanut butter here's a banana roll it up 
cut it up and it's kid sushi and it got 800,000 views dude and I was like what the heck but now but now as you're posting other stuff in there these people are now coming into your network and so honestly be so consistent with it but do not spend a lot of time on it like I spend under an hour a day on TikTok I just get it I get it up I leave it and then I use it as a funnel to get to my Instagram, to get to my Facebook. I will get everybody to my Instagram and my Facebook. Every, like I will funnel them to there and then that's where they're watching. So opportunity videos, I mean, I'm not that, I'm not that, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not creative. I just copy people that I, like if I like their stuff, I'm like, oh, I love that, I'm gonna do that. And that's what TikTok is all about. You just copy just copy people and just like get ideas and do it and get the content up. And then as the, you know, get, get your text replacement so you can respond fast, but use it as a funnel to get into your other social media. I love that so much. So yeah, I, it's funny because, uh, one of my girls, she actually sent me a viral Facebook video. I redid it and put it on TikTok, and it has eight and a half million views dude yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i was like whatever granted it went i think it went viral in some other country but i was like i don't care it still makes me look more legit which i the, the one thing i love about tiktok you guys it's kind of like when instagram came out dude if you were in the business when instagram like hadn't really been big yet i remember being like all oh, these damn kids they're going to make me get on Instagram. And then stories came out and I was like, okay, I got to learn stories. Like, just like Jackie said, like, we have to always be willing to adapt and go where the crowd goes. And like right now, there's always going to be different people on Facebook, different people on Instagram. But right now there's a large crowd that's never been talked to, never been anything on TikTok. And so, um, I think the biggest secret with it is like you said, getting content out. Cause people are like, what do you label your things? What do you this? What do you that? It, I think it's just kind of luck of the draw, right? Like, yeah. Or who sees what? So do you have like a, like a system? Like, do you just do copy viral videos all day long? Or do you, um, do like business ones a lot? Like how often do you do like business and product ones? I would say I probably do like, I would say if I have 10 videos, six of them are going to be business opportunity. Oh, or maybe, good. I love that. And then like two, you know, maybe two product and two random. I do. I think the opportunity all day, every day, like I literally look at TikTok as like, you can sit there and put one fishing line in the water, but TikTok is like, you have the net on either end of the, like, the, the river and you're just like catching all the fish. And if you, like the more you're getting your message out there, the better, like that's how I feel. And, um, what, another thing that I love is you can block keywords in TikTok. So I block words like pyramid scheme or it works or scam. And so I leave everything very much curiosity and I just, you know, if people are negative, I'll usually just delete it or whatever, but I'm just always sharing the opportunity. I always share. I, and I, and again, I don't, I don't really focus on hashtags. I don't look up training hashtags. I'll label it what I think you know, whatever it goes with, I will try to use a trending hashtag every time. So when you click the hashtag, it'll show you like a word with a fire emoji beside it. That means it's trending. So I'll do that. Um, and then I'll use trending sounds. So if there's a sound trending, TikTok's going to show that more. And so I'll just click the sounds, click trending, and then just have that in a background and I don't dance or anything like that. I'll just like point to words and then that's usually how they go. <laughs> Okay. I love that. Okay. So, um, wit really quick before I ask, actually I'll ask this. Can you do a private TikTok? Yeah, you can. Uh, I she's a teacher, so she can't have public social media. Is it worth getting it? Yeah, I totally think so. Yeah. I mean, you just have to approve people. Um, so I think that's awesome. Okay. So number one, how do you, uh, take out those words? the secret words or whatever. So in, in settings, um, it'll be like, so it'll be like settings and then it'll say, um, privacy and it'll just say, um, like words to block. And then you can just type them in. So you can just add whatever. So I added pyramid scheme, scam, it works like anything, rap, uh, MLM, all the goods. All the goods. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, okay. That's amazing. All right. So let me ask you this, cause this is always the reason why people actually do stuff, the results. So 
how many people do you think you sign customer distributor wise a month since after those couple months of being consistent? Oh, customers, I would say between like six and 10 and distributors like over 20. Oh, dang. All from TikTok. All from TikTok. All yeah, from TikTok. And, and a lot of them will come to my Instagram, but oh yeah, they're, yeah, literally like I, it, there's, there's, yeah, it's been crazy this last couple months. They are all, from, they're all from TikTok. And this is what I feel too. I've, I've signed a range of ages, like, you know, younger, older, like I've signed everybody. But what I feel is for like the younger, the younger people on there, I've signed a lot of younger girls, college girls. They, um, I find the people on TikTok are almost like a different breed because I feel that they, they don't have this, like, is it a pyramid scheme? Like but mentality. They don't, yeah. they don't know it. And they're, they're like, they're, this is weird because I know this, but there's this girl on TikTok. Her name is Charlie. She's like 15 and she's this dancer. Like she's like a professional dancer. And overnight she became famous on TikTok. She was a regular girl. She I've seen, video. I've seen her stuff. Yeah. She's a really good dancer. But anyways, she, that's like who are, that's like who are their generation is like, that's like they're, they're looking up to, like these influencers that are making just the random people making money on the internet. So when you can come in and say, I'm an influencer, you don't have to convince, you don't have to sell them the dream. Like they already want to make money from their phone. It's just, are you going to be the one that brings it up first? Are you going to be the one that remains consistent about it? And are you going to ask them, are you going to make yourself open for the conversation? And like when you open the floodgates, it will not stop. I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys, I don't know if you just heard what she said, but that new generation, you guys, that new generation, making money from your phone is normal. Using social media to be an influencer to make money is normal. We don't have to convince them of anything. They already know and they're already willing. Oh, that's a, that was my aha moment right there. That's, woo, that's amazing. And you know what? People always say like, our, I feel like our generation, I mean, granted, it's every generation, but I feel like this new generation coming up, like we're dreamers. Like we're just like make money on the internet. Hell yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm all in, you know? So I love that. And yes, you, the best part is you could be a copycat and that's what everybody's doing. So that's cool. Um, but you guys like, I'm literally, oh man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go sign like 25 DTs on TikTok. Okay. So we have, we have obviously a little bit longer. So if you guys have any questions about TikTok, just put it in the chat. But I think the secret is just making content. It's just actually doing it, you know, and obviously I'm going to go copy all your videos. So that's cool too. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh, one of my, well, this kind of answers the question. So one of my girls asked, where, where do you get most of your enrollment? Was it Facebook messaging inter interaction? Is it uh, law? Of, I was gonna say law of attraction. Attraction marketing. Um, I would say it's literally doing all of the things. Like I really feel like you know to grow to grow a plant, it's like a seed to a plant, you need water, you need sun, you need soil, you need the seed. I feel that the enrollments come from doing all of the things. I feel like I, if I had just done, done TikTok, but I didn't share my story every day on Instagram, they would have never signed. Because I feel like they had to maybe get from TikTok to go through all my story highlights to see, oh, she's legit. You know, people that maybe didn't have the nerve to message me first, but then I messaged them because they were viewing my story turned into an enrollment. I feel like if I didn't grow my network, I would have never had the opportunity to find these people. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like all of my enrollments truly come from all of the things, um, you know, but one of the biggest things for me lately, and I've been implementing this into my daily list every day is I message the people that like my posts. And I did this when I started religiously and I don't know why I stopped, but basically every day that I have, you know, a lifestyle post, a product post at the end of the, at the next day, I will screenshot that post message every single person that likes it on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, Christy, thank you so much for the love of my post. I'm not sure if this interests you or not, but I got a spot open right now on my team to make an income from your phone. Are you ready or are you, do you want some info on what I do? And a lot of the time it's just sparking that conversation. And you guys, people want to make money right now. Like in this season, people want to make money. And so I feel like in this time, we need to be asking more people. And I feel like that is what is bringing in so many people for me right now is just asking. I love that. That's funny though, because I did that in the beginning too. And then I stopped for a while. And then I realized like, 
I think we so get focused on like growing our network, having the interaction that we forget to actually like ask those people that are interacting with us. So I love that so much. Okay. Let me look at those other questions. Hold on. They, they went down. Okay. This is a good one. So how do you stay organized, especially with all of your potentials? You got people blowing you up. What is your organization like? So I'm very unorganized. Me too. I'm like, that's the wrong question. But I will show you what how, what I do to help my brain. So I um I write down and I put it in my in my phone <laughs> because I have to do both because I count on losing one. And so in my phones I have a list called Pocket List, or it's an app called Pocket List, and I just have potential loyal customers, potential distributors, and I just add people as I'm in. Like I want to get 20 new names on my on my list every day. That's my goal. And then it, it'll like it'll just allow you to set reminders for follow-up like I need it to pop up on my phone or I'm probably not gonna find it and then I will also have in my book a, like a before, like a like a page for loyal customers a page for potential distributors so I write them down um staying organized can I talk about being organized on like my list like yeah my, and what was the app again some of the girls are asking pocket list pocket list okay or, or it's even if you have an iphone like you know you can just use your reminders app like you can just say okay. hey scary rem have remind me to follow up with blah blah tomorrow like i just need to have it written down um this has been the biggest thing for me though like i don't know if you guys can see this but I, this is what i do every day um to organize my daily list and so i have i write this out every day and basically it says at the top stories with 10 little boxes that i write out posting and then it says lifestyle, box, product, box, filler, box. So meaning like every day I'm putting a lifestyle, every day I'm posting a product, every day I'm posting a filler. Messages, so I'll have 10 boxes, each of them representing 10 messages. So I know that every day I have to message 100 people. So if I go message 10 in the morning, I'll check off a box, right? So this is why I say organize with like my daily list. Post a post, I have four squares, meaning if I need to get five up at a time to total 20 for the day, Grow my network is um, 10 here. I got to fill some of these in still. So. Um, like 10, so Facebook, once I add 10, I check it off. Instagram, once I follow 10, I check it off. So I follow 100, I friend 50. Interact, five minutes on each thing is a box. And then I message likes from my pictures. And so I'll go down to five pictures from the day before and out for Facebook and Instagram. And um, I'll like them. And this like helped my brain so much because I do feel like a confused mind will say no. And if you like don't even know what you're doing, like you're not going to get to where you want to go. So you have to be organized in what you're doing. And this helps me so much because if I look back at the end of the day, like today I've had a busy day. I've you know sent out 50 messages. I have over half my stories done. I've got all my posts up, but I haven't liked, you know, I know that I can't go to bed until I do that. And so just keeping organized in your list. This has helped me a ton. Okay. I love that so much. And half my team's like, Oh my gosh, I love that. But you guys, we have our roadmap to diamond United days. It's boxes that you check off, print out the damn paper and then check them off. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, ah, I'm going to cut you guys. No, it's paying attention to me. Okay. No, I do love that though. And I'm telling you though, that, that hundred messages though, you go girl. Okay. So that is the six. That's her six list. That's her daily six list. Like she's doing the freaking things. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you Becky girl, we got it already. Okay. You're just not paying attention. Okay. Um, so anyway, <laughs> there was something somebody asked that was like a different, uh, yeah. Someone's like, girl, you are organized. What's wrong with you? I'm like, I wish I could show you my life behind this computer screen right now. Yeah, it, it's, you know what though? You're, you're amazing for a reason. So it's fine. Okay, so Peyton asks, who do you add to your potential distributors list? So you guys, if somebody says no, they don't go on the potentials list. If they read your message, don't respond, they don't go on your potentials list. But what to you is considered a potential that goes on your follow up? So if somebody tells me they're interested one time in making money, growing their hair, clearing their skin, having more energy, detoxing their body, toning and tightening loose skin, they're interested until they do it or they block me. That is my thing. But I'm not like my, my way about it is I'm not pushy. I actually kind of play hard to get kind of. I don't like tell them no, but I'm not like in their, you know, inbox every day, but you're on my follow-up list. And if it takes you a year, six days, six years, 
four years, three months, I will follow up with you until you do it because I know that you want it until you accomplish it. You know, so if someone's like, I'm interested in making money, like you're on my follow-up list and I am not scared to follow up with you. I'm not scared to build a relationship with you. I'm not scared to interact with you because truly like, it's just, I feel if, if they're not convinced this, I haven't done a good enough job. And so I have to just be so, so consistent while I have them on my follow-up. And I really, like I said, if they tell me they're interested one time, that's a lead. And I want, if you're, if you're new, like your mindset should so be not to just have a sale, but to have a lead. Like my goal is to generate leads every day. Leads are what turn into these enrollments. And so anybody that's interested is a lead. <laughs> And a lead will will hatch. You will either host a post for me, you will either be on my team, or you'll be my, you'll be a customer, if, even if it takes you ten years. Okay, I love that. So wow, y'all are just going crazy with this uh, follow up. Okay, so what do you what, like? What does your follow up sound like, and how often do you follow up? I don't really have a rule for follow up. Like I just, you know, in, in that app, I'll push it back. Like if I, someone says oh, I'm going to sign up on Friday and they don't sign up on Friday, I'll put them for like the next Friday. Or if I followed up a ton, ton of times, I'll push them a couple weeks back, but I don't really have a rhyme or reason for it. And my follow up is really simple. Hey, I'm just checking in. I know that you told me you needed an extra income. I'm filling spots today. Are you in? Like I don't beat around the bush. I don't waste my time or their time. I just get straight to it. And you guys have to think too, people, like I used to be so nervous to follow up and what to say and I would overthink it because I didn't, I didn't want to be rude, but it's actually more rude to not follow up. Like I, people get distracted and in this business, we're in, we're in the business of like answering and being there and talking, but a lot of people are not, a lot of people are busy. A lot of people are, you know, doing their own thing. And so my follow up is just like to the point. And if they have an objection, I just like, I handle it. So if they're like, no, I'm not ready today okay, when is a better time and I can put you in my schedule and reserve you a spot? Like, I just keep it so simple. I treat it like, like, put it, put it this way. If you like were a business, like a business, if you were hired as a dental receptionist, like my dentist calls me like all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to get that last cavity filled. I'm scared. Please stop calling. I don't want to do this <laughs> at all. But like, if you were hired as a dentist, as a dentist assistant to book in time slots, you would just do it because that's your job. Like you would just follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. It has to be the same mindset with this business. Like that's just, they you do it until they fill in their cavity and I'm not doing it. I love it. Dude, you sound like me. I, Aaron's like, I think we have a dance appointment. I'm like, I'm not going. <laughs> I hate that place. <laughs> I'll have another baby. I'm not going. <laughs> No, I hate the freaking dentist. I don't know why. It's just, it's just one of those things. Okay. Um, oh, so all okay so host a post do you do it how often do you do it do you go hammer time with it what's your spiel yeah i do do host a post and i switch it up all the time like okay this has been my favorite thing for host a post and i just i'm like gonna get back to doing this because i oh i'll try the pictures i'll try the words i do it on facebook i do it on instagram but the, i feel like some of the best host a post that i've ever like seen a react or response from is video host a post and so this, can I like talk about this? It's a little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's a little bit like different and it's a little bit extra, but it's just works so well. So if you have an iPhone, you can use iMovie to do like the, the like voiceover on your videos. And so basically what I would do is I would record a video of me like making the coffee, like just my hand so my team can use it. And it would be like, like, so I would, I would like get my, to hold the camera and I would be like, okay, here's the water. And then I would like pick up like my coffee and hold it to the, the phone and then I'd open it, pour it in, add my greens, mix it. And then I would go into iMovie and I would voice over my recording. So I would, you know, maybe slow down the video a little bit, super simple to do, like just like click the thing and then it slows it down. And then at the top left of iMovie, there's a plus sign and then it, you can click voiceover. And so then I would be like in the voiceover while I'm making the coffee, I'd be like, okay, like, Hey guys, my name is Jackie Deering. And then I would say, you know, I'd be like, my name is Jackie Deering and I'm looking for a few people who are looking to lose weight and drink coffee. And I just like, ha I just like turn on this little, like, you know, like an infomercial. It's like, hi, welcome <laughs> to this. And like, that's what I do. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, so first I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it. I'm like, so I'm going to pour in my pack and I like try and time it out. I like it has MCT oil, grass fed butter, collagen, and it's going to help keep you full. And then I'm like, and then I'm going to add in my greens. I'm going to mix it together. And if you're looking to try this, make sure you reach out to me on Instagram. And then I have my little thing at the bottom where it's like Instagram at Jackie Elizabeth 
or you can comment on this post and I'd be happy to send you some no pressure info. And so when people ask me that when they, when they're going to host a post, I send them that video. It has to be under a minute and I send it in a messenger and I say, all you're going to do is you're going to press and hold on this video. So they press and hold it. They can save it and then post it on their timeline. And I, you know, we'll do that as a host to post and then like maybe put some results in the comments and it blows up. Like people just love videos. They love to watch it. We are so lucky to have like visually appealing products. Like the coffee looks good when you make it, you have the light on it at the right spot. You can like see the little, like, like swirling inside the reds, like literally that that's what I do for host to post. And then you okay. can put it on your story and TikTok. You can use it for all your things. Bro, I thought I knew all of the things. Uh, you're amazing. Okay, so what I love about the things that she's saying is you can make it once and use it for all of your social media. That's a story, that's a host to post, and that's a TikTok. Yes, and, oh. and you can make it, like, I, I'll send you some of my generic ones that I have, So and then my team uses them. And so then they'll just put their phone number over top and then you can't see my face, my face in it. You just see my hands. And now what a better time. We all have no nails. <laughs> I was, I was literally going to say, I better do it before my nails get too long. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they'll know it's you. Cause I'm like, my little boy hands are just going to be everywhere now in all my videos. Cause my nail place is closed. But yeah, that's, that's a good way. That's like a prime way for host posts. I find. Oh my gosh, dude. I am just like so grateful to have you on here today because like you just brought us new. Yes. That it's just new. It's new. It's what we've never heard before. So, woo! all right, you guys. So who's going crazy with the TikTok and with the host post with the video? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I obviously am going to say, you're going to have to send me one of those videos, please, because these girls are going to blow me D crap up to get them. Uh -huh. I will. I'll send them to you when we're done. Oh my gosh. And I don't even drink coffee, but I'm going to do one so I can do hose and both and just like make it for them. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Okay. Collagen, hair, skin, nails. Like there's so many, like so many. I just love you. You're amazing. Okay. Um, all right. So very last thing, which I don't really know if you could teach this, but how do you train your newbies to actually do personal development? Basically, she's saying her girls is being lazy and they ain't doing the things. <laughs> Honestly, for me, I just like force them to do it. So I do, I do power hour Zooms. We do them like every morning and I just like don't give them a choice. Like we're listening to this, like we'll listen to it together. And it's always different stuff. Um, you know, sometimes we'll do like, uh, we'll do like, like it works training videos or we'll, we'll just search just like you know, just like you said earlier, type in the word motivation and then just have somebody like pump you up. Like that's the kind of stuff that I like to listen to. Um, or we'll listen to a book together. You know, like I just, a lot of people don't like, I was one of those people that was like, I don't really need personal development. Like I'm not here for that. And so I just, sometimes you don't know how much you need it until you actually start listening to it. So if you're, if your people aren't being receptive, get them on a power hour and then just be like, psych, we're now going to listen to this and just put it on and people, people will get into it. I love that. And just so you guys know, we have like five power hours that go on during the day. They're all in the announcement section of the team page. Get on them. Like the accountability for that is everything. If you start to get like a group, like you get on like two a day and now y'all are the same group and you're like, make sure I show up. I'm gonna make you make sure you show up, you know? So it's su such an amazing accountability. Um, okay. Do you guys want to ask her anything else? I mean, honestly, in my brain, I'm like, okay, just take those two tips and go apply them. Go make TikToks and go do videos. With <laughs> <the post. laughs> I like, just want to apply those. Just want to apply those. Okay. Um, all right. Is there one last thing that you're just like, bring it, bring it home, girl. <laughs> I would just say, be so loud about where you're going. Just get a very, like, I feel that you, like your vision is going to be what not only casts, you know, for your team, but for your potentials. And like, if you're feeling, you know, you're like, I just got to, you know, I think we've all gone through seasons where it's like, I just got to get like, I don't want to say re-motivated because I think motivation is kind of like bull crap, but where I need to get re-inspired, get really like, figure out why you're here and get excited again, get excited about your business, go like give such vision to the people around you and like, just know where you're going, know where you're going, have a goal. Like, I, I mean, you guys obviously all know this, <laughs> you're on Christy's team, but just get so fired up on it and know where you're going. And people want to be a part of something or with someone with vision. And I think especially now, like people are looking for something. And like, I mean, the thing that just blew my mind is that our company was up 33% of last year in our sales, not our distributors are like, I'm sure those are up too, but 
our sales, our customers, like people need what we have. And so like, are you going to be on the boat to take them there or not? And I know Christy's boat's going, right? So get on that boat with her and go. Yes. Yes. Guys, this boat is like halfway, you know, off the port. And so you better jump on because we're going to leave without you. <laughs> okay. I love this so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all your goods with us and not holding anything back. And we appreciate you. And I will see you later. Somebody else is taking this screen, but that's fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.